What's going on ladies and gentlemen, it's Michael here and welcome back to Fudge Muppet. Today I'm going to be taking you through all of the illusion perks in Skyrim and talking about which ones are worth getting for your character. Unlike other perk trees, most of the illusion perks are pretty good and there aren't a whole lot of really rubbish ones to avoid. That said, you'll be using different perks for different builds and one thing I want to let you know straight off the bat is that you should not be using illusion and getting perks for it unless you're going to make it a relatively significant part of your playstyle. The reason for this is that you won't be able to use your illusion spells on high level enemies later on in the game unless you invest into illusion thoroughly. So if you do decide to make this decision, I'll have you know that this is one of the most powerful and useful schools of magic that exist. It's very fun if you want to manipulate the battlefield, especially if you want to win your fights without having to draw a drop of blood yourself. For those who don't know, fear based spells make enemies run away in terror and flee, pacify based spells stop them from attacking, and frenzy spells make them attack everyone and everything including their allies. So straight off the bat, I want to let you know that if you're planning on playing a character to level 100 and beyond, your illusion spells will become less effective. This is because they are level dependent, however some enemies in Skyrim scale with you and therefore if your spell affects all enemies that are level 77 and below and you're level 81, then other enemies that scale which are also level 81 will not be affected. But there are tons of strong enemies that don't scale and heaps of characters won't be playing all the way into the 3 digit levels anyway. So first up, let's talk about the dual casting perk. This perk is highly necessary. What this perk does is times the spell power by 2.2. This means that if your spell theoretically affected a level 10 enemy, it would be able to affect a level 22 target. Essentially, if you want illusion to be useful, you'll need this perk to buff up your spells so they're actually usable later on. There is one exception though, and that's if you're diving into illusion just for the invisibility spell. In this case, you'd only want to go up to the expert illusion perk to reduce casting cost and then up to the right hand side to get the quiet casting perk so you can operate undetected. That said, that's a lot of perk investment just for one spell, so unless you just really love the spell, just operate as a stealth character without it. If you invest heavily in the sneak skill then you're basically invisible anyway. As I said, illusion is best for characters who want to manipulate the battlefield. Also the illusion spell called muffle which silences your movement also becomes useless later on as you master sneak, although it's fantastic for leveling illusion if you just continually cast it over and over. Now in terms of the perk line which goes up from novice all the way to master, here's what I have to say. Straight up master spells are not worth it and therefore the master illusion perk is definitely a miss. These spells only affect targets up to level 25 as they can't take advantage of the dual casting perk. That said there is the master rally spell called call to arms which boosts the power of those around you. But but this really isn't that useful and doesn't have a heap of application, so I'd still say the Master Illusion perk is not worth it. With this in mind, most builds will need to go up to Expert in order to be effective, as Expert spells can be dual cast to affect the highest level enemies. This makes them the best. That said, if for specific roleplaying reasons you only plan on using Frenzy spells, then you'll want to stop at Adept Illusion as there is no Expert level Frenzy spell. The same thing goes for the actual spell called Rally, which for the stats of those around you. It's the adept version, but again, this is another niche situation. Most characters will want to use more than just frenzy or just rally, as being able to frenzy, rally, pacify, and cause fear as well can be very useful. Anyway, so now that I've told you why you should avoid master spells, why dual casting is almost always a must, and why most of the time you shouldn't go into illusion if you're not going to go up to expert illusion, let me tell you why you must get most of the remaining perks tree. Firstly, we have the Animage perk. Besides sounding cool, this perk makes your illusion spells affect higher level animals. It adds 8 more levels to the max level of animals that your spell will affect, and this is factored in before you multiply this by 2.2 due to the dual casting bonus. This is a must, as is anything else that increases the abilities of your spells to affect higher level enemies. The next perk after this is called Kindred Mage, and this makes your illusion spells affect higher level humans. 10 levels higher than normal action again before you times it by 2.2. This perk is obviously worth it as you'll want to be able to manipulate the highest level possible human characters as an illusion using build. It basically allows you to reach enemies 22 levels higher than you normally would by using dual casting. But there's other perks to take this even higher. Before that however, I want to touch on the perk above Kindred Mage called Quiet Casting. This perk is absolutely essential for any stealthy mage. Whether you want to sit in the shadows as a puppet master and make your enemies fight each other 
other in a huge influenced mess, or if you just want to cast invisibility without turning bandits heads your way, then this is a huge help. So with this perk, the worthiness is based on one simple question. Do you care about stealth? If you do care about stealth and you're obviously using illusion magic and other magic schools, then get this perk. It's fun to snipe people from dark corners using the icy spear destruction spell, although it's not the most effective playstyle. In a nutshell though, get quiet casting if you're stealthy, but if you're just a pure mage who doesn't care about stealth or a warrior who always comes in loud and proud, you definitely do not need that perk so it wouldn't be worth it for you. Three more perks I want to talk about are Hypnotic Gaze, Aspect of Terror, and Rage. These all raise the maximum level of targets you can affect with Pacify based, Fear based, and Frenzy based spells. Hypnotic Gaze will increase the max level that Pacify spells affect by 8, Aspect of Terror will increase the max level that Fear spells affect by 10, and Rage will increase the max level that Frenzy spells affect by 12. All of these perks are cumulative with Animage and Kindred Mage, and all of them are factored in before dual casting. Because of dual casting, you can really just slightly more than double all of the examples I just gave you, so Rage really increases the max level you can affect by 26, not 12. As an example of how useful these perks are all together, let's take a look at the expert level spell called Pacify. It affects targets level 20 and below, and we'll talk about a human enemy as an example. So Pacify will only affect a max level of 20. You add 10 levels due to Kindred Mage, bringing it to 30, then you add another 8 levels due to the Hypnotic Gaze perk, bringing it to 38. Now you times this by 2.2 and your Pacify spells can affect enemies at level 83 and below, or perhaps level 84 if it rounds up, and this is of course using dual casting. You can see why all of these perks are therefore quite worth it, so that you don't end up with useless spells in the higher levels of the game. The only reason these perks are not worth it is if you're not going to be using all of the manipulative spells. So if you had a character that only wanted to Pacify, you might want to stop at Hypnotic Gaze, and then if you really wanted the final perk called Master of the Mind, you could just get the Quiet Casting perk after Kindred Mage as your stepping stone to get there, this way you save one perk point. But that said, this is another very niche example, and in most cases you'll want to get all three manipulation spell perks. The only other point I can think of that you may want to consider is what level you are actually going to be playing up to. If you don't expect to be climbing to the highest levels, you could actually give all three of these perks a miss. This way your Pacify spell and Expert level Fear spell called Rap out, would still affect human enemies level 66 and below. Your frenzy spell would still affect human enemies level 52 and below, or 53 if it rounds up. Or you could not go up the right side at all and get all three of these perks and ditch Animage and Kindred Mage. It's not too bad, but like I said, if you're serious about your build and you want to take it to a high level and be properly effective with your illusion, you should probably get the three perks I've been talking about. Now last but not least, we have the Master of the Mind perk. This perk allows you to cast illusion spells upon undead, daedra, and automatons. At first this sounds like it's not the most advantageous perk, but then you realize that so many enemies in Skyrim fit into these categories. All the dwarven ruin enemies, the ridiculous amount of draga, and any daedra that you happen to find. These are all included. As a master manipulator, it's awesome to be able to influence these creatures, and it's absolutely necessary as a pacifist build who doesn't want to take lives with their own hands. You could potentially give this perk a miss if you're already a powerful warrior or mage who doesn't really need illusion and can just kill these enemies normally, but then again, why bother using illusion anyway if this is the case? I guess you could just have it for fun, but that's obviously not the most effective. So in summary, I'd say this perk is definitely worth getting, and again, it just stresses the point that 9 times out of 10, you should only be delving into illusion if you're going to be going all out. All out without the master spells, in my opinion though, and therefore the master perk. Illusion magic can be very powerful just make sure you invest in it quite heavily for the best effects. I've told you everything you need to know, almost all the perks are worth getting except for the Master Illusion perk and the Quiet Casting perk if you're not going to bother with stealth. Everything else is pretty worth it, although if you want to skimp on three manipulation based perks or keep them and ditch Kindred Mage and Animage, then you can technically. You'll just have to deal with the fact that you're not fully optimized against as many enemies as possible. Subscribe to Fudge Muppet for more videos like this, we really like making them and we're super glad that you watched the video this far. Please like this video if you want more like this, and leave a comment below with any other advice that you have. We've got heaps of builds coming as well, so stay tuned for that. Thank you so much for all of your support. My name is Michael, and as always, I look forward to nerding out with you when we meet again.